Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We've got another one from the Rarities series today for Fender Friday. Just in case you've missed my previous episodes, the Rarities series was a limited edition for 2019 that consisted of three Telecasters, five Stratocasters, and a single jazz bass, and they were essentially going after the boutique market of guitars. They offered their flagship models in fancy tops, less than usual wood choices, a multitude of specs and colors. And at the time of release at NAMM, they were speculating about 400 of each of them would be made. It just all depended on wood supply. So feel free to check out these two videos of the individual Stratocasters I've reviewed, or if you want an overview of the whole series, you can check that out right here. But this is the last one that I plan on reviewing of this series, at this point in time anyways. It's, it's the last one I bought is what I'm saying. I would love to check out the blue Telecaster, the red mahogany Tele, and that Koa Top Strat. But for today's episode, this was released in September of 2019, and it is known as the Flame Maple Top Telecaster. The biggest claim to fame for this one is it's chambered. It is a chambered Telecaster. And from what I've gathered, Fender doesn't do this too often. Some other examples that I was able to find include the George Harrison chambered Rosewood Telecaster. And I found a run that was done in 2004 of a Telecaster with a spruce top that was chambered. I'm gonna have to find myself one of those cause that's just interesting. It's like the acoustic guitar world meets the electric guitar world. But something that there are more of on the market are the thin line Telecasters. You know, the ones that have the F holes right here. I couldn't really find what this thing would look like if you didn't have the top on it online. So I'll have to find out if the thin lines vary from the chambered ones on the workbench. But now let me tell you about my first impressions, just opening the case for this one. Man, look at this top. It's so beautifully quilty and flamed. This is definitely a prime example of one of these. It's a beautiful top. But once you pick it up, you go, huh, it's lightweight, but not crazily lightweight. We'll throw it on the scale here in a minute, but what you're probably really wondering, is it neck heavy? And the answer to that is a, a little bit. It's not gonna neck dive on you, but it really just wants to sit parallel to the floor. And that's not uncomfortable to play like this, but honestly, if you have a nice gripping strap or a shirt that's not quite as silky as mine, you're not gonna have any problems playing it the way you want to. It's not even uncomfortable to hold it in this position normally. It takes minimal effort. So if you were scared to pick up a chamber telly because it's neck heavy, the particular one I have anyways, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a huge issue by any means. And then the next feature that just made me ultimately fall in love with this guitar was the neck. I talked in those Stratocaster videos how I didn't necessarily like the necks because they had a satin finish. It wasn't the traditional satin finish. You could still feel the wood grain. It was just weird to me. This has the perfect blend for me. It's got that traditional smooth feeling satin finish on the back of the neck, but on the fretboard, we've got the goopy goop. It's the full gloss finish here. And I love that feeling. That's the thing I love about Fender fretboards, the way they traditionally do the maple board with the glossy finish. It just feels right in my hands. And it helps prevent against like dirt and grime buildup. That's the thing I hate about when Gibson does a maple fretboard. They get dirty so fast and you can't unstain them. Now, obviously with this stuff, eventually over the years, you'll wear through the lacquer, but that's just something way far down the line. But something else I found interesting is the edges of the frets actually have lacquer over them. So it kind of reminds me of fret nibs in the Gibson world. So I guess you could potentially tell if it's the original frets or not by looking at the edges of the frets right there. But one slightly negative thing I noticed is there's a lot of give in the feel of the frets. So I think we still have a little bit of lacquer over there. I'm guessing a slight steel wool treatment will take care of that though. So it's probably nothing, you know, long term. It just needs broken in. It's a brand new guitar. But once you get used to the whole lightweight body, you fall in love with the neck. That's when you notice the sides of the body. I'll be honest, at NAMM, I wasn't really sold on this one because this just looks so goofy. But in person, I think it works better because you can see all the flame and everything on this one. So normally when you're playing and standing up like this, the audience will see your beautiful flame top, but you don't necessarily see it. So you get the beautiful sideshow display of the flame. And that's just such a beautiful feature to me. I loved flame maple. It's just cool. 
So now that I know this works visually in person, then you can really start to appreciate just how thick this top is. I mean, it's pretty much a half and half thing. It's not the thin tops like we saw on those Stratocasters. I mean, this is a big mamma jamma top right here. So it really does remind me of a Les Paul or more accurately like an SG Elegant because those are pretty much half and half. But then again, all of them might not be as beautiful as this one. Some of the flame tops, they can be weak. Some of them can be nice. I mean, it's kind of luck of the draw with these. But there was still one question I had about these that I actually had to call up Fender for. What is this black stripe running through the middle of these guitars? Because if you go to the spec sheet online, it'll tell you it's a flame maple top with a roasted alder body. What is this? Is it just finished? Did they put a slight stripe of walnut in there to kind of make it look like binding? Those were my two guesses, but thanks to Kelsey at Fender, she did a bunch of digging for me and she found out what it is. You won't find this information anywhere else. This is a vulcanized fiber. That sounds pretty cool, right? <laughs> it's essentially a very fancy way of saying it's plastic. The Google definition is it is a laminated plastic made completely of cellulose. It's a horn-like material that's lighter than aluminum and tougher than leather. But why exactly did they have to use this? Well, since this is a roasted alder back, you can't join a roasted wood to a live wood. Apparently there's some issues with that. So that's why there's this vulcanized fiber in between them so they can join them to that and then in essence together. So I guess I could see why Fender wouldn't put that there's plastic in between them in their spec sheets. Because people might construe that wrongly. It's pretty cool. They should tell us there's vulcanized fiber in between. And my last first impression on this thing is, man, the Shaw neck pickup. It's kind of a wide range humbuckered type looking thing. This really is kind of just like an old style thin line Telecaster. It's kind of got a cool vibe to it. So let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench and take a look at its individual parts and learn about its specs. Well, I actually found some pretty interesting stuff in this Telecaster. Let's dig in. So first off, the big reveal underneath the pick guard. What do we got going on here? A giant route. So that tells me if you wanted to, you could add a middle pickup to this guitar. You just have to wire it in. I think you got just enough room in that channel right there that it would all fit in and everything. But I found this interesting. This must be designed for the vintage style ones where you adjust the truss rod right there. So you have that little channel for that. It doesn't work for this model because your truss rod gets adjusted all the way up here. But we see the return of that ugly looking shielding paint in here, as well as the label that they use to identify the body. And a piece of tape that has a T on it. And the pickguard's also branded with one of these as Chambered Telly. And this is the Tim Shaw designed Shaw Bucker 1T pickup. And then that is paired with this one that they're just calling the Hot Vintage Style Telly pickup. The backside of this one isn't too fancy or anything. You just kind of got those rubber grommets right there and in between the screws that keep it in place. And this is just a vintage style Telly bridge setup with the sated steel barrel saddles. You can see the compensation right there. But this is a string through Telecaster, so the strings go through these six right there, and then it's just screwed into the body right there by those four. And again, you've got some more barcodes in this pickup cavity route. I was hoping we'd be able to see that fiber layer, but I guess now that I think about it, I think that's what this ugly black stuff is, is that fiber layer. Because that lines up just about perfectly. But here's where things start to get interesting. I opened this up and I was like, what? Why is there a stacked pot right here? So my first instinct was to pull on this knob, see if there's like a series parallel switch or coil split or something. But no, what that is, is it's a 250K pot for the single coil pickup and then a 500K pot for the humbucker one because they just decided that would sound better. I'm not quite sure which one is which, but that's what they're doing for that. So the way it's wired, it'll just automatically run that pot that it's supposed to be with. And then the tone pot has a treble bleed on it. And I was reading online, some people think that this double stacked pot would be harder to turn. There is a little bit more resistance as compared to the single one. I'm using about the same energy here. This one is definitely faster, but had I not been told that it was different, I would have never guessed. So a little bit slower, yes, but nothing that you're really going to super notice. But those are CTS pots, and then I'm not quite sure what those little circuit boards or whatever they are are doing. But we'll take a quick look at them here. Simple three-way toggle switch here, nothing fancy there. But now it's time to take an adventure inside the Telecaster. 
So inside here, that just leads to your output jack. That's just pretty much the normal stuff here. But this one does indeed continue, go all the way up the Telecaster. I'm guessing it routes it out till about right there. But from my understanding, the thin line Telecasters just have a route right here and a route right here. And at first I thought that was the case here. You can see where there's a wooden block, that's where this is being screwed into. And then you have a little cavity right here that just kind of leads up for the pickup wires to come through. But you can see where this block ends and then the chambers are connected. They go all the way together here. I mean, it goes farther than my light goes. So my best guess, as far as what I can see here, it's the two big chamber routes that you normally see on like a thin line telly. One over here, one over here, but they're also connected in this area where it kind of bumps up here for your strap button. So it's slightly different than a thin line without F holes. Then you gotta remember you have all these big routes within it as well. So there is a lot of body wood taken out of here. We'll have to see if that affects the tone at all. Also something cool to see, wherever there's a screw hole, notice there's a little bit of an extra tab of wood right there. That way the wood wouldn't split. Nice touch. Now we'll take a quick look around this maple top so you can see both sides and top at the same time. This is just such a beautiful sight. And there's a few characteristic marks about this one that I especially appreciate. At first I was like, yeah, what's going on here? Weird stand rash? But no, that's just a natural light streak in the wood when they split this in half for the book matching. That just got copied over. It almost kind of looks like a little smiley face you could put right there. And there's your nose. <laughs> Moving along this side, you just have that barrel output jack. Nothing too crazy over here, but just a beautiful specimen. There's another little characteristic mark on the neck that we'll have to take a look at here in a minute. Spec wise again, we've got that maple top that we just looked at, the roasted alder body, which is also a cool color. And then you get a pure maple neck. This one uses a skunk stripe, so your neck is your fretboard at the same time. And as I was alluding to, I did that steel wool treatment job to kind of get the finish off the top of the frets so it'll play smoother. I mean, they're still there along the sides, but that's just kind of how Fender does their fretboards on these. But something interesting here, spec wise, is it is a 22 fret neck, oh, nine and a half inch radius fretboard. And you've got the narrow tall fret wire. The nut is made of bone and you have a biflex truss rod in here with the access at the top of the headstock with the walnut skunk stripe ending right here. And then here's your headstock. You've got Telecaster as well as Fender Corona California. Then I never understood what stagger tuners meant until I looked at these. You see how the low E sits taller and more proud than the rest and it just slightly goes down? That's kind of cool. But these style tuners, they just wrap around the post. They don't go inside. Moving on to the roasted alder back. Beautiful wood grain on this example and more characteristic marks here. You've got these little mineral streaks here that kind of you know, almost make a Christmas tree, you could say. <laughs> Anything in a V-shaped pattern, I guess. But it is a string through Telecaster. Once again, beautiful wood grain. No tummy cuts or belly cuts or anything crazy like that, though. Neck plate just reads limited edition. You don't have the serial number on here. It's on the back of the headstock. But in the neck cavity, you can see a date stamp, May 5th or maybe the 9th, 2019. Then whatever these markings mean and somebody's name. Looks like Miguel, maybe? Other than that, nothing too crazy here. The neck itself has a fifth hole in it. I wonder if that has to do with finishing how they hang it up or something. But no date stamps or anything on this guy. You just kind of have that barcode serialization as you saw in the body. So that's how you can tell if your neck is original to the guitar. Not quite too sure what a regular Telecaster weighs, but this one's four pounds, almost 14 ounces with everything on it. And the neck, straight ones, one pound, 11.1 .1 ounces. I guess before I put the neck back on, here you can see that center seam line. It is a two-piece alder body. Moving up the neck here, typical maple with your walnut skunk stripe. Everything's looking good here. And your serial number, finally, on the back. US 19061423. And that characteristic mark I was talking about, no, it's not that one, but I guess you could consider it. But there is a lone bird's eye right here by the fifth fret. It's really cool when you're playing this guitar. They're not all gonna have that, but you know, it's something special for this one. I get a 1.68 inch nut width, which increases to two inches at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.85. And that stays very consistent, 0.87 at the 12th. Fender calls this the modern C-shaped neck. The pickup readings within the circuit, neck pickup about 7.22k ohms, middle position 3.67, and then just the bridge 7.48.
And all put back together with 10 gauge fender strings, it's weighing 6 pounds 12 ounces. That seems pretty good to me, but I haven't had too many Telecasters in my life. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. <laughs> What did I think of this thing? Well, the bridge pickup sounds like a Telecaster, right? It's got that twanginess. <laughs> sounds great with distortion, too. But for the neck position, I wasn't really knowing what to expect on this. It's actually a really nice, kind of punchy sound and dark. <laughs> But what I found is if you roll the tone off, you get some very jazzy tones out of this thing. So if this one's a little bit more mellow and subdued... What's it sound like when you mix the two? It's still more chimey, but it just kind of tames it a bit. But the great thing is, is I found a use for everything, so it's kind of an interesting Telecaster tone-wise. Now that we know all about the Fender Rarities Chamber Telecaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I'll be honest, this was my least favorite of the three Telecasters when these things were released, but I'm really glad I gave it the chance it did. This whole half and half body thing, it looks much better in person than it did in photos. So I'm definitely glad that this one landed in my lap, but I still want to try out those other two as well. It needed a little bit of setup work and fine tweaking, such as steel wooling the frets to make them nice and polished and feeling good. But once I got it up and running, I didn't really notice anything too detrimental to this. The whole neck wanting to sit parallel, yeah, it was a little bit annoying at times, so maybe keep that in mind, but it's not like a super diver or anything. But I definitely enjoyed this Telecaster. But one last thing I want to talk about do the colors actually match on this thing or not? That seems to be a running theme with the Rarity series where they just kind of put as many colors as possible. Because you've got the dark ambered lacquer on the neck, but then the face of the guitar, it's just a pure blonde. And this looks really off in photos, even in video, but in person, it, it kind of counteracts each other because just the way the light hits it, it kind of matches, but it kind of doesn't match at the same time. And I'm still not sure how I feel about the tortoise shell pick guard on a natural guitar. It, it wouldn't be my first choice, but I don't think black or white would look that spectacular either. I think it works since it has the neck mix match thing going on. Then once you get to the back, you get the brown roasted alder body with the, once again, the maple neck here that's been tinted and aged. 
It's just kind of a big conglomeration of colors that you kind of get used to it the more you have it. But if I had to take a guess which one of the Rarity series will become the most collectible in the future, I would almost have to say this one because it's the most unique in my opinion. It's got the whole chambered out Telecaster. It's a half and half top. I really have not seen many guitars that look like this. So is this a future collectible? Maybe. But then again, the more and more I learn about Fenders, maybe there's other ones that are just like this, but we'll have to find out. So since this is part of my Fender Friday series, this guitar is now up for trade or sale. You can check out the link in the description to see if it's still available and if you want to buy it. But if you want to trade me another Fender guitar for this, you can email me at tradetrogly at gmail.com. Mainly looking for limited edition Fenders because I just think they're a lot more fun than the regular run of the mill stuff. So let's go ahead and review the condition on this one real quick. I mean, this thing's brand new. You might find a nick or ding here or there. But other than me playing this thing for about an hour or two, I really don't think this thing has seen much use because the guy I got it from, he pretty much just got it brand new and then had to sell it for some unknown reason. But I did not see any major nicks or dings in the top and man, is this a beautiful top. I let those rarity Stratocasters go pretty cheap, but I think this one I might hold on to it for a better price because not all of them look as nice as this one. This is a spectacular example. You still have the pick guard film over top of that, so you can remove that if you want, so any of these light scratches you're seeing will go away. When I got this, the pickup actually had the film over it too. I removed it just in case it would affect the tone of the playing demo though. Moving on to the back, you know, nothing too crazy back here either. It's just a nice satin finish with that gloss on the top. I'm digging this neck combination. It really works. And the beautiful back, I mean, you might have a few light scratches or swirl marks back here, but, but I would guess this is in a similar or better shape than most store demos out there. Do a quick run through of the sides. Ah, I just love this profile. It's so cool. You don't see this too often. A flamed outside and you got these cool little marks there. This guitar just has so much character to it. And I think that's why I kind of fell in love with this one too. Blacklight time. Kind of like that other Rarities Stratocaster that had that maple top. We're getting a really cool glow here on the front. And then on the back, yeah, this one glows too. Sometimes poly glows, sometimes it doesn't. It's a brand new guitar. I doubt we're gonna find anything, but this is mainly just for the looks. <laughs> Neck's looking good here. Yeah, so this whole thing glows apparently. Cool. On to the case. This one comes in its original brown Tolex vintage style case. It's the one that has the two combo locks. For whatever reason, I think every single one of these I've ever had, except for one, this thing is always hard to open. You gotta do that and then kind of wang jangle it and it eventually opens. But you still have the plastic over the handle. You got a tag there and a single clasp with your Fender logo. You might find some light storage scuffs here or there, but I think for the most part it's in clean shape with a golden interior. But inside here sleeps a bunch of case candy. I was very thrilled when they had this in here. This is the ashtray cover. You might have missed it, but earlier on in the episode, I actually had this on just to see if anyone was paying attention. <laughs> and usually I love the look of an ashtray on a Telecaster, but with the humbucker, I don't know, it just kind of looks too clunky, I think. So ultimately I decided to leave it off, which most people do. It's just kind of a nice vintage aesthetic that they did include it because I mean, they didn't have to, they could have saved themselves whatever it costs to make those. We have your online lessons tag. You have the certificate of authenticity. You got your fender manual here, fender sticker, lacquer finishes, precaution and care, despite not actually being a lacquer finish. And this is your uh, case pick and tag. And this is the bag that your ashtray goes in. And then all that goes inside this fender baggie. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Fender Rarities Chambered Telecaster, you can check out that link in the description, which will take you to the reverb for sale page. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.